Welcome to ECU Flash Training Part 5. In this video, we're going to take a look at the differences between a mass airflow and a speed density style calibration in the Tefra V7 ROM type. We're going to have a bunch of things to cover in this video, so let's jump in so we can check them out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at the differences between our mass airflow and our speed density Tefra V7 ROMs and understanding the tables that are corresponding to each and understanding the primary differences. So when we're doing our tuning process, we can choose the correct style ROM for our application. So first and foremost, I have both files open here, both file types, an 88590715. That's going to be a math-based ROM, specifically in the ROM ID. The zero here is gonna to correspond to the, uh, the designation of the mass airflow sensor. I've labeled it in the ROM ID here, or the ROM naming, I should say, so we can see it's going to give us the ROM ID Tefra V7 and MAF, so it's very clearly labeled. And we also have our 88592715, and I've labeled it here 3DVE. So this is a 3D speed density volumetric efficiency style ROM. Now there is a 88591715. I've omitted it from the training course. That's a two-dimensional speed density ROM. That's the older way to go about doing your tuning process with your Tefra V7 ROM. I choose to work with this 3DVE because it, 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 it's a little bit more familiar if you're used to working with standalone systems. Um, so if you're used to working with Haltech, um, AM, Megascore, and on and on that has a traditional 3E VE table, this is gonna be what you're, you're gonna be accustomed to. So let's jump in here into our Tefra math-based ROM. Let's talk about this first, and then we're gonna compare it to the 3D VE speed density style ROM and understanding the differences between these two and why you might wanna choose one over the other. They definitely have their place or purpose depending on your application that you're tuning. So let's go in here to our math-based ROM and take a look at this first. So what we're gonna do is go and move into our current ROM metadata and scroll down here on our left-hand side we're going to find here that we have a section called math tuning. Now this is going to be all the tables related to do any tuning with your mass airflow sensor in your math based style Tefra V7 ROM. So this does require the factory mass airflow sensor to be hooked up and functional. Now what we're going to find that's a little bit unique to the Mitsubishi's is that the sensor itself isn't going to register air mass on its own. It's actually going to measure, measure just airflow coming into the engine. So we're going to find that the sensor itself is gonna read in hertz, or the signal output from the sensor is gonna be in units of hertz or frequency. It's gonna be between zero to 2600 hertz approximately, the output signal, the total signal uh, of spread of the sensor. And we'll find at 2600, that's gonna be the highest it can flow, and at zero, that's gonna be having no airflow through the sensor. Now, the sensor is, again, just registering the airflow. So we have this other portion the density portion of air coming into the engine to be able to get air mass. So in the very first video, we talked about the mass of a substance. So mass is equal to volume times density. The factory sensor is going to just reg register the volume of air coming into the engine and then translate that into a frequency reading. The other portion of that, or the density portion, is very, very important. That's going to what gives us the actual air mass calculation. So we're establishing the volume of air coming in the engine with the factory sensor and then by using the intake air temperature and barrel pressure readings, it's gonna be then turning those into the density portion of the calculation. So again, mass is equal to volume times density. Volume will be the airflow coming from the sensor. The density will be coming from the intake air and the barrel pressure readings. And therefore we can calculate then what the air mass is coming into the engine. So that should make sense right now. It should be a pretty simple concept to understand. So let's jump in here and talk about some of these tables and what they represent and what we need to Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.